Hi guys, welcome to Winsome Cottage Garden. My name is Hannah and I'm so glad that you decided to join me today. Today is a glorious day and as you can see we're in the city, but this video is actually going to take part mostly a cottage. Um, if you guys remember, I'll link a video below. Um, recently I took out a dead crab apple tree in my backyard that had been underplanted with a lot of shade plants that are now exposed to the sun. So we dug them out. I found homes for a good number of them in my own yard but a good number are also going to the cottage. So today what I'm gonna do is kind of inspect what I have, get them ready to go to the cottage because my dad's actually gonna be in town briefly today, shuffling around siblings, um, and kind of get them ready, get them set, and take them up to the cottage, and we'll finish this video there, finding new homes for them. Okay, so things that we already have ready to go, we have these two hellebores that are going to the cottage, which is exciting. Um, one thing I know I have to actually split, and then pot up. I have this pasta, which has actually been here for a little while, so it's probably not as happy as it could be. But I'm gonna cut it in half. So we actually planted the other, it was more like a third of this over near that jug. So this guy, I'm gonna cut in half uh, and then get those in pots. Finally, I have to kind of inspect these a little bit more. Uh, I think this hellebore is what in there pretty well. Could use some extra soil, so I'm going to throw some extra soil in. This guy, I need to sit better and put more soil in as well, because my goal is to get these planted next weekend. I don't know when you guys are seeing this, to be honest. Uh, I've said this in other videos, but obviously I have a full-time job, so I do this on the weekends and at night. It's been really hard lately when... I get home from work and there's only like an hour of daylight, if that. It's also been excessively rainy, so gotta get that stuff sorted. So I end up filming a lot of videos all at once. So you're gonna see me wearing this actually probably, uh, or you have seen me in a number of videos because I'm actually gonna film probably two other ones today after I get this one started. So um, I'm filming this, it is October 2nd. So next week, I'm going to get these in the ground. I'm getting a little close to when I probably should have already had stuff planted. Next weekend is going to be the big hurrah at the cottage where we go through everything in the plant hoard um, and everything that I bought recently, get them in the ground, then really assess what can be wintered over if their spots aren't ready or what we need to sink into the ground elsewhere. I'm going to be doing that then. I don't know when you're seeing this video. It's probably going to be mid-October, but just so you can understand the timeline a little bit more, I figure it's better for me to still produce these and let you guys see them, especially because I know my fall is earlier than a lot of you because I'm so far north. I'm in West Michigan. Um, the city garden is zone 5B. We've actually already experienced our first frost. Usually it's not for another two weeks, but we did have it this last week, came early. Um, and the cottage, ironically, is further north and west. Um, and it's, but because it's so close to Lake Michigan, which is a really large body of fresh water, uh, it makes, they're not on Lake Michigan, but they're within like two miles of it. And it makes, it's part of a strip that is a lot more temperate, um, than other things. So even though they're further north than I am, they're a zone six, um, and they will not get their first frost for maybe another, like they haven't had it yet. And they should usually get it a week or two after me. Their winters are probably similar. Their summers are a little cooler, but it's just in general more temperate. And like, if you guys follow fall color, which in Michigan we do a lot, um, it's the color is coming in the trees here, um, but along the lake shore, it's really delayed. Cause again, the water really helps temper things out. So all that being said, I have a little more time to plant things there. Um, so, but today's really my last day to get stuff in, in the house. So I'm getting ready to get these stuff, identifying what needs to move to the cottage, getting it ready. Regarding this, I'm going to kind of move everything over to where my plant hoard is, split those hostas, and I'm gonna get things on the driveway so they're ready for my dad to come. So let's set you guys up and get going.
that is everything that's going at the cottage. Normally I'd water the plants in that I added dirt around to make sure the dirt got down into the roots. But my dad, like I said, is coming to take these at his car later today, so I don't want them to be heavy and super wet. So what I'll do is ask him when he gets home, water them in really well, and if he sees that any of them need dirt, add a little bit. Next thing you'll see, which will still be in this video, we're actually gonna start getting these planted. We made it to the cottage, as you can see, and you can kind of see from behind me that the fall color here is definitely starting, which is exciting. It's pretty cold today, like cold this has been while I've been working outside. I think it's about 48 degrees, um, but in the sun, it's pretty pleasant, especially if you're in the sun out of the wind, which, you know, there's not many places that's the case, but, when you can find it, it doesn't work well. Anyway, I thought we'd wrap up the video and kind of where we moved those things out from under the shade tree and there's some things I was gonna find spots for here at the cottage. Um, I wanted to quickly show you the ones you saw in that video. There's a couple more, to be honest, that had already made it up here but have not yet been planted. But here are the ones that made it up. Two of them, I don't know if they're gonna get planted today but the hostas and whatnot definitely will. So from my house, these are the guys that I'm not sure I'll be planted today. These are tiger lilies, ditch lilies. They're also called here. There's this really cool grass that looks kind of sad because it's in a bad spot, but I have one of these. They have really cool seed heads. And then we already have a still be that I actually don't know if I really talked about it much. I actually pulled it out of a place that I put a hookera in in my house. Um, because it is, as you can see, it's getting too much sun, so it's going to be popped in there. Then I have one, two, three hellebores, two green hostas, and one variegated that have been nipped a little, but still better to get in the ground than not. Here's the rest of our plant hoard. If I'm confessing what things are looking like, I should also share these. We do have, I don't think they're all going to get planted today or in this video per se. They will actually get planted this weekend. I have another couple small pastas, uh, sedum, some more hookahs, some coneflowers, some ground cover. Oh, another hellebore I forgot about. Yeah, lots of just great things. Okay, things have shifted a little bit. I showed you my plant hoard and the hostas and whatnot that I wanted to find spots for. Then I started walking around trying to figure out where things were going and I realized I have a lot of stuff, much more than I thought. And I knew when I was pulling those hostas out, that there were more hostas, like, and we split them more than I had anticipated. So I actually spent probably the last hour or so in an impromptu way dotting around plants to figure out where they're going. So instead of me just planting the things we pulled out in this video, I'm going to plant a few of them. And then I'm also going to plant some things from the plant hoard and uh, that, that are new. Uh, so that we can kind of fill in a space rather than walking around and planting them in tons of spots. Because I do have in this one area a large number of things being planted. Okay, so we are at the front of the house at the cottage. You can see things have started dying back a little bit. But if I walk over here, you can see where I've started dotting things. So these one, two, three, I think they're actually hookerellas. I might have called them hucheras, but I think they're hookerellas. So I'll get closer and figure out exactly what they are. These guys came from the plant hoard, my recent trip to that large greenhouse. I'm also going to be adding in one, two, three ground cover bits. I really want to get those in the ground quickly because my sister Molly is actually mulching this area. We still have a trailer full of mulch that this bed got done last fall. We were going to wait to do it in the spring, but we're going to do it right now because we got the mulch. So I want to quickly get this in the ground so that Molly can come in and mulch around this. Yeah, so I'm going to get you set up and we will get these in. Then I'll tell you a little bit more if I know more about the plants um, in this area. Maybe I'll give you a little tour from like the back way so you can kind of see how it looks at all angles.
All right, we got those in the ground. Let me kind of tell you a little bit more about them and then I'm gonna explore in depth this bed a little bit more. We have really filled out this area this year. I am loving how it is looking. This hellebore we actually planted um, earlier this year, I think in a video, I'll see if I can find it. It's a Trader Joe's special, as I like to call them. I did get to see it in bloom. So this one is the same bloom as one right here. So it flanks the doorway nicely. But I'm really glad we added some other colors in this bed. We do have that blue spruce lollipop over there, which is beautiful. And we have lots of gorgeous texture. But it's a lot of the same color. So today we added in some red purpley tones with these three cucarellas. We've got one, two, three. These are all the fun and games red rover cucarellas by Proven Winners. They stay fairly short. They only get six to eight tall. So I think that that might be as tall as they get, which is okay. But they stool out quite a bit being 18 to 20 inches wide. They're Hardys and Jones four through nine, uh, and they bloom late spring. So they can do part shade to shade, and this is a fairly shaded area. It is the north side of the house, but it does get some morning sun from over here that's filtered. This is a, oh, I don't remember the kind, but it's a specimen rhododendron that's yellow that we actually planted last year. And it was one of my very first videos, but it, it blooms, so as do the astilbe, and I know these are all shade plants, but I'm pretty happy about it. Oh, because they also get, these guys might not, but they do get some sun uh, late afternoon, not necessarily this time of year, but um, when the sun is a little higher in the sky. Anyway, fun and games, Red Rover, Hookerellas. I think they are just going to uh, bring a lot of depth because they also pull the color out of this little quick fire hydrangea standard that I think it just kind of pulls that color in. We also added this ground cover that I originally had three that I was going to plant and then I got in there and I realized I just need to break these up because it'll go so much further. We planted this recently in my yard as well. This is an ajuga. Um, common name is bugle weed, weed and this is the princess naughty ajuga. So it has, let me show you, you can see the tag. It's got some really pretty low growing blue flowers. This, I love how bright it is. I think it's going to bring a pop to the color that will actually make the green stand out more, which will be really, really nice. This is um, partial sun, so might not bloom as much here, but we're planting it for the foliage more than anything. It grows six to eight inches tall and eight to 10 inches apart. My experience with the Juga is it doesn't really stop growing. It's a ground cover that just kind of keeps on spreading. So I think over time it will give it maybe five years, but it'll fill in this area well. Uh, it's also a zone four through nine. Over here, this is the one thing we planted from um, that used to be under the crab apple tree in my house that died. The crab apple, not this plant, obviously. It is a hellebore. I don't know specifically which kind. I do know it's part of the wedding party mix. So once it blooms in the spring, hopefully I'll be able to identify it a little bit more. Um, but hellebores are really great partial sun shadeland plants. They have, they're somewhat evergreen in our area. I mean, they look, they don't necessarily lose their leaves, but they do get covered by the snow. So I, you don't really notice them as much, but I do have another Trader Joe's special hellebore here. That's a different variety to the one by the front door. So I really like that we now have three in this bed. One, two, three. I like planting things in threes. And I honestly don't know how much more we will be able to add to this bed other than probably some more ground covers. Oh, let me go in the back. I wanted to give you a little bit more of a closer look at this bed. Uh, and actually, let me just pause where I am and kind of show you how this kind of fits in with the scheme of the cottage. Here's another view. We are up. You can tell it's the end of the year because the jet skis are coming out, but um, we're at the front door. So it kind of wraps around and I'm on the path right now that this goes and circles around. I love this path. It's one of my favorite because it um, is very secret gardeny, but um, it connects a little cute stone stepping path down from our driveway. 
and we just have so many fun things in here it's very shaded so we focus more on textures um, but you can see here we've got like painted ferns these are sawtooth ferns and woodland ferns this is a fake rock that's actually our well head but it's a pretty good one and you don't really tell anymore so we like it. This spruce lollipop, I wish we would put on a little more growth, but it is, is very fun. I love it. It's done pretty well and it looks so cute and gumdroppy in the winter with the Christmas lights. We have these ferns all along the base of the house. Um, and as we get closer, you may have actually seen me moving these guys. These are forget-me-nots that we have just filling this little bed. And unfortunately, everything does slope to the house, but we can't really level it out more. Than we already have so we've added these rocks as kind of like a rain check put the forget-me-nots in there we like to try and keep them um together you might not be able to tell but there used to be a ring over there it's gotten a little bit buried as the years have gone on and things have run down but another view from here but we do have a stand of astilbes i don't know what variety they are they're a light pink so i mean it might be vision and pink if i had to guess it's probably that that is a really pretty stand right there and it just kind of fills in you now you can see the back side of where we just planted with that pretty light color um we have some hostas in here this one actually used to be right here and i moved it again earlier this year when we planted these incredibles uh, and we have two more right here i do not know what these variety are because these came from my work they were throwing them away and well they were splitting and didn't have a place to put them so I saved them, gave them a home. It was basically a rescue. Um, and we also have an acanthus here, Bear's Claw. This is a zone six. It is, I originally bought it from my house, which is a zone five. Um, and it was in its spot near the Japanese maple in the front of my house. It was right behind it. So between the Japanese maple and where that, um, where we recently planted an incredible and the horse trough planter is. It was there for about five years and never bloomed. So a couple of years ago, I did dig it up and bring it here. Um, it's never bloomed here, but I think it was either last year or the year before. I can't quite remember how long it's been in its place. But it's gotten bigger here than it has anywhere else. And ironically, I have some of it coming through because I must not have gotten the whole root ball. So I've been thinking about digging up the other bit and sticking it right there. Because this is surrounding the thing that kind of overlooks this whole area. We have a paper river birch. Uh, which, I mean, you can see it's so beautiful. It's just beginning to put on some fall color. I'll actually hop up and go show it to you from over there. But, um, yeah, I love this. It's got such interesting bark uh, that peels naturally. Got a lot of definition. And it's just so pretty. Before I head over there, I want to quick kind of show you to round out this bed. We do have, this is a Sonic Bloom Wygelia. Some iris, I don't know the variety. A couple fescue plants. This is a Buckeye. Um, that's never really put on conkers, but it does have really pretty flowers in the spring. And it kind of goes around. We've got some more iris, some cherry brandywine rutabecchia that's come back the last couple years, so... I'm hoping that it continues to do so. This is a purple Igelia. I don't know what kind it is, but it's supposed to be more purpley. I think this is some of its fall color. Over here, I just wanted to point out, this is actually one of my favorite corners because it's a little bit of a hodgepodge, but as you walk up the path, it just kind of provides such a little bright, fun spot. We have a couple of varieties of um, a still be. I don't know what these ones are. A Lowe's Clearance Special. This is a mouse ears hosta from our old house. I don't know what this is, but they just provide this pretty pop and we did add this in a recent video. Let me just clear. Molly's been mulching the crown of the plant, which will provide a nice little red pop. Here's a backed up view of the river birch. We love its tri-trunk um, and we do wrap Christmas lights around it in the winter, which is really fun. So these two hostas aren't staying there. I haven't quite figured out where they're going. But I am going to be adding in three things in here. Two hellebores. This is another wedding party mix. This is a Trader Joe's special. And then a Stilby. Uh, I don't know much about varieties. This one might be called like a lime Stilby or something like that. It's very small. All these came out from my yard. These were both under the crab apple. And this one was in the front yard. But it's in a spot that is now full sun. 
Um, so finally decided to move it. So let's get you guys set up, get those planted, and then I think I have one more area that we'll visit in this video. get that last plant I wanted to include in this video in the ground so I thought I would show you that and then circle back around the front to show you what the plants in that front bed look like this is an area we've spent some time in uh, we planted this earlier this year and then these guys um, I've talked about a lot because I love them they're toad lilies you can see what they look like in their full glory so pretty well actually they're almost like they're still, they're, I don't know if they're quite peak, but they're close. A little just past, probably, but love them and how they mix and mingle with the painted ferns. I had identified this as an area I wanted to add something when we added this uh, Brennera earlier this year. And I did. I planted a hellebore. It's pretty small, but it is right here. It's leaning that way a little bit, but it'll come this way when it starts going with the sun. This is a honey moon hellebore. I'm not sure exactly what color it is. If I look at the tag, it doesn't really tell me, but it's not one that I had. So I was really happy with it. And it was such, so cheap for hellebores. Hellebores, if you know anything about them, especially specimen hellebores can get to 20, 30, 40, $50 a plant. This one, I don't know if it's specimen per se, but it was $2.50 in clearance, so obviously I bought one. I almost bought more, but thought it was a good place to start. This one will grow 15 to 18 wide and 18 to 24 tall. So I thought it would kind of fill this space in well. I wanted to pop it over a little bit, but there was something there, and I think, I think it'll still be good there. So we do have another hellebore in this area right here. I don't remember what kind that is. I want to say it's like... New York or something like that. It's fairly new too, so it didn't bloom last year. So I'm really hoping both of these bloom next year. Let's quick make our way to the front of the house. I told you a bit about these wall before I planted them because I don't have specifics on them because these all are transplants from my house. But we've got the one hellebore here and I love how big those leaves are. So I think it'll be like a nice fan there in a juxtaposition to the ferns loving that uh, I also need to cut this back a little bit but this will also be when it's blooming they still be will have died back so it'll be nice and front and center we also have one over here which is a Trader Joe's special and again in the spring I don't really think anything will be here so that's pretty and we added this little itty bitty still be this little itty bitty still be right here and I just want to stand back for a second and appreciate how full this bed is getting I mean I just love it. I'd say it's about 14 to 18 months old. I can't quite remember. And a lot of these plants were added this year, but I think it's, I think other than a little bit more ground cover and maybe another spot for uh, some toad lilies, I think it's kind of done. And I am honestly loving it. And my dad and I were talking, I think this arch will probably fill in next year. It might not be full, but it'll be reaching which is really really exciting anyway i think that's where i'm going to end this video we still have a lot of plants to get in the ground so there's probably going to be at least one more probably two maybe more because even when i was putting stuff places i was like you know i really wanted to move this here which will mean i'll move this there and then this new plant can go here which I feel like is always the gardener's way. But so that all that to say, there's going to be more planting to come. I will add a caveat. If you've made it this far into the video, I've been really scrambling to get as much done as possible because the weather's turning. So I thought it was better to still share it with you, even if it's a little after the fact that of when it was done, than not. Again, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, please make sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe so you can continue seeing the other plants that we get planted here today and see how they progress in the years to come. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.